Hi everyone, today I want to talk about AI. So AI is everywhere, it's going to stay and be more and more uh, interwoven with our workload. There are various opinions, some people say it will replace developers, some people say it won't. I guess time will tell, uh, but for now uh, it's definitely useful to learn AI incorporate it into your workflow uh, and see what is it all about. Um, if you've watched a few videos from my channel, you know that uh, I focus on terminal, um, terminal editors such as NeoVim or various terminal tools to build a very efficient and powerful workflow. So today we are going to take AI um, and what it can do for us and integrate it with the terminal. So the vision for me, at least how I want to interact with AI through the terminal is to have a highly controlled dialogue system where I can use LLM as an intelligent, to a degree, of course, terminal assistant with my oversight so that I can maintain the execution and boundary and kind of guide the LLM. So essentially, the vision is to have a mix of uh, pros that you can write to LLM and communicate with it and a mix of executable commands so that you don't have to kind of break your workflow and move all around the place. So how this idea looks in practice. So we have, of course, an LLM assistant, whether this is an API that uh, is provided by Anthropic or OpenAI, doesn't matter, or something running locally. Uh, in theory, it should work with various options. I am using APIs, uh, mostly from Anthropic, so I'm using Claude, uh, but again, the the idea here is that it should be adaptable to various styles and what you're comfortable with. So the central part is NeoVim buffer. The NeoVim buffer serves as an interface between myself, LLM, and my machine. This is very important. So there are three players uh, in this whole setup. Whenever I open a new buffer and I will demo it uh, towards the end so you'll see how you can use it yourself. Whenever I open new of buffer, I want to provide a short prompt to LLM and I want LLM to come back to me with commands that can be executable in my system so that the LLM can inform itself and provide the best possible support. Those commands prov provided by LLM should be, of course, read and reviewed. Um, and once we are happy with them, the command should be executed. And again, new of buffer will gather the output and send it all back to assistant. So you have kind of like almost a poor man's operator that uh, uh, OpenAI is uh, currently releasing, <coughs> where you do let the LLM do things with your system, but you're pretty much in the loop. Um, it's possible to extend this setup by providing, you know, print screens or pictures uh, as exactly as the operator does it. But for now, for my workflow at least, this is very system centric. So I am using LLM to troubleshoot various things on my Linux box or just to develop scripts or do various kinds of automations. All right, so that's how the idea of the implementation is. The key components we have the command. Um, we can preview the output of the command or get the output of the command that informs the LLM of the system state. And all those three components, uh, they create a context window. So we will see later in a buffer in NeoVim, the LLM maintains the context of a chat session and kind of can continue, you know, troubleshooting a problem or going through something in an interactive way. A few prerequisites uh, that are necessary. NeoVim, obviously, um, I am using a plugin called the gp.nvim. There are more plugins like that, Avante, NVim, and others. I've made a video about it. 
a while ago, I'll link it in the video description. Uh, you need V-Shell. Um, Bash would probably... No, Bash wouldn't work because I am using specifically Z-Shell widgets. Um, you will see later to open the, the command prompt. And obviously LLM access with some API keys. So that's about it as far as prerequisites go. Nothing crazy. And uh, let's see uh, what, what it contains. So first is the prompt. So prompt, I try to keep it very simple. So the instructions for every session uh, where we are going to open an assistant is something to keep responses short. And I'm instructing the LLM to work with commands. So essentially, if it doesn't know something about my system, instead of asking me, it should provide a command so that I can execute it. And then the output of this command would inform further decisions. Uh, here you can see also I am giving it permission to use internet search. And the way I implemented it is through Perplexity API. So I have a Perplexity API, very simple script, um, wrapping Perplexity API, and the LLM can use it, uh, especially for like confirming things that, uh, you know, like checking the latest changes of a, a CLI or something. So um, this simple prompt, this can of course change, but for now, you know, I, I work with this and it works quite well. Uh, and that's where every session starts. So how it looks like in practice, and again, I'll demo it in a second, just to kind of guide you through it, what to expect. So first, imagine that you ask an LLM to, you know, check for all the text files, and LLM comes up with this ls command. What you can do, I have a special um, key binding, which essentially works with backticks and checks the, the last backtick, grabs the command from there and executes it and puts the output at the bottom of the buffer. So this would essentially lead to outputting this, so point three. I have an output of command whatever and there's an output. So it's essentially, from my perspective, I ask a question or I want to solve a problem and LLM starts communicating with me instead of in normal language, it does it with commands. And I'm just executing them and we kind of continue going like this instead of, um, you know, just writing to it. Okay, so a few implementation details. As I mentioned earlier, we are using uh, Zshell widgets or Zshell, li Zshell line editor widgets. Those are really cool. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why I use Z shell instead of other shells. Uh, and um, you can do a lot with those, but we will see the code later. Essentially what it does, it enables us to pass an output of a command directly into the LLM NeoVim buffer. And uh, again, NeoVim is a central piece here. It enables us to communicate uh, in this three way between myself, LLM and the system. And um, that's kind of how those things are put together. Uh, so a few safety features or, or kind of checks that need to be in place. So the, for me, it was important that the, there is, I need to essentially accept everything, but this accepting is really simple. I'm just executing the command. So whenever I feel that the command is correct, I uh, execute a key binding in NeoVim and the command kind of keeps going. I also can add text in between, so to correct the LLM or you know, nudge it in the right direction. But at the end, this controlled information flow um, is based off various commands that are being executed. Um, the context for each session is buffer based. So the plugin I'm using actually creates like a chat, which is just simple markdown file. Um, with the buffer where we can execute and kind of keep the same content. Those are uh, ephemeral throwaway buffers uh, or chats that you can clean up later, or you can keep them for some history. Uh, and also, uh, I mentioned earlier that we can execute a command and capture the output of the command uh, to help LLM uh, diagnose it. So that's the entry point, can be an entry point to, to our session. Okay, so 
that was a short introduction and now I will show you how it looks like. Uh, we are going to do two things. We are going to troubleshoot a kubectl command and we are going to analyze logs. Uh, so you'll see all those concepts in action. So let's switch to, to the demo session. So first of all, I want to run kubectl get nodes uh, wide. And this doesn't work because I don't have any cluster running and uh, I might not know why this is happening. So I would expect that my kind cluster is there, but I'm getting all those errors. So I can just put click a shortcut, which is uh, for me, it's uh, control alt G. And you can see now we are in the buffer. So this is the prompt we've seen earlier. And at the bottom is the output of the kubectl command and the error. And here I can type something. So I can say, um, I am using uh, kind and there is no cluster help. So now I'm sending it off to Claude in this case, and you can see the Claude instantly comes back with a command. So it tells me how to check uh, whether kind clusters are running. If you don't know what kind cluster is, don't worry about it. It's just a way to run Kubernetes cluster locally in Docker. So I execute my binding and I'm saying kind get clusters and it tells me, oh, it appears there's no clusters running. Let's create a new one. Okay, so let's do this. So again, I'm executing the command. This will take just a moment where uh, when the kind cluster is going to be created, but you can see kind of the idea of the flow. I presented the problem to the LLM and instead of it uh, trying to like come up with some ideas or explanations, it actually provided me commands. So now the command run, I have a command output and now um, it says that the kind cluster is running and LLM informs me about it. And now we can execute the kubectl get nodes and then kind of LLM continues here, just giving me more commands to, to explore if I want to, but I don't want to do this. Let's say, let's remove it. So again, it should present a command and exactly that's what happens. We are deleting the Kubernetes cluster and everything is gone. So now we are, we are done essentially. That's kind of a very, uh, you know, trivial example, but uh, it, that's how you could um, interact with it. And with just a few um, kind of steps, we were able to interact with uh, the LLM and execute various commands. So let's do something else. So the way we entered this session was to provide the output of a kubectl command, but we can also enter the just a session like that without providing any inputs. That's the raw session. And I want to, let's say, um, let's, let's check this log. So I wanted to, to kind of help me with syslog. So it says like tail, that's a reasonable command. So I want to do this and we have some errors. So you can see that in my syslog shows me that there is a service called touch egg, which is a, I'm running pop OS currently and this service cannot run. The, the obvious reason is that I'm running this on PC, so there's no there's no touch services. But the LLM correctly identified the problem here, and it tells me to check the status. So I'm okay with that. Uh, we are running the command, and it says that the command is dead. And now here it says me that we can start it, which is of course a good advice if you know the simple error is the service is not running. We check the status and we want to start it, but that's not the case. Actually, I want to tell it to, do I have, sorry, do I have, I can't type, do I have touch support? And again, uh, now I'm nudging it in the right direction. Oh, we actually don't know if we have touch support. So let's execute this X input command and we have a bunch of, you know, various uh, devices, but no touch support. So there's no devices listed touch support. And so no touch support. So now we can say, how can we disable service? It again gives me a disable, but now let's see if it will uh, help me search internet. I know that there's 
a way to disable a service but to, and to stop it. What's the difference between disable and stop? And here it uses internet. So we're executing this internet script with a query. And again, it's a simple wrapper around Perplexity API. And then here comes an answer from Perplexity with various links. And LLM gives me a response here and um, kind of acts accordingly. So you could see that in both cases, whether we started the session from troubleshooting an output of a command, or we just opened like a random session, uh, LLM was able to uh, help us and by giving us commands and us executing them and feeding it uh, uh, the output, it was actually very, very helpful and quick uh, for me to to do anything. So it, this workflow shines anywhere where you actually need like external commands. You can also execute um, something with curl. You can create a script to, you know, like I did with search, with internet or all kinds of things that you can imagine uh, that you can do to add kind of like almost like tools uh, to your LLM and uh, provide it with a prompt. So I think why I like this workflow is, um, first of all, this is really um, kind of based on free and open source tools up to the LLM. Of course, I am using a, a paid offering here. But again, this would work with uh, something like Olama if you have a little, little bit stronger PC. Uh, and open source alternatives are also um, being created. So, so definitely something that uh, should work equally well. Of course, the quality of the model is something to think about. Uh, and I like it because it's really very well integrated. It never breaks my flow. When I'm doing something, something doesn't work. I can quickly do this and I, I'm always in NeoVim anyway. So just centralizing this around NeoVim is something that uh, is really great. And I have kind of other ways of entering the same or similar flow from directly from NeoVim and, and from, from Terminal. Uh, so very, very simple to set up, really trivial, just a few key bindings and uh, it's more about, you know, having NeoVim as a central interface and uh, creating the commands uh, that LLM can execute against your system or whatever other APIs you might have. It's a little bit of coding, but uh, since you're watching this channel, you probably already are into tweaking your system or like coding, so it shouldn't be that bad. As always, all the source code uh, is my is mostly in my dot files. I will link them in video description and also the presentation and uh, demo for this. Um, presentation you, you will see there too. Uh, I would really like to know what are your um, AI based workflows? How do you incorporate it uh, outside of the kind of mainstream traditional open web browser? Uh, but whether are you using APIs or using something more elaborate? Have you found uh, some, this being helpful? Uh, I would love to know some more about it. Otherwise, as always, uh, thanks for watching and see you in next video.